So welcome to this video, my name is Alex and recently I've been noticing a little bit more information popping up about Billie Eilish, people making videos about Billie Eilish and that she's into Satanism and so on. Now obviously Billie Eilish has been in the, um, kind of in the, in the mainstream for about two years now. Um, she's been um, building her fame and becoming more popular for the last two years. Now I made quite a few videos about Billie Eilish um, the beginning of last year, I think, or the middle of last year, about some of the messages in her videos. And the messages obviously are very, very dark and very um, demonic and satanic. But it's important to understand that she is not alone. She's not just one artist who's singing about Satan. There are so many. Satanism is rife in the music industry. And there is a specific agenda right now, not only in the music industry, but in the film industry, and in basically the whole consumerist market, there's an agenda to sell Satanism to young girls. And there's a very specific reason for this, which I'll go into in a minute. But young girls are being targeted specifically um, with satanic messages. So Satanism is being sold to them. It's being sold to them as a, a method of empowerment, a method of teaching those uh, oppressive men a lesson. It's about having power and um, and freedom as well. So basically in the media, Christianity is being painted as the enemy of freedom, the enemy of tolerance, the enemy of uh, equality um, because of its anti-homosexuality um, position. And so Satanism is being sold as the antidote. It's kind of the anti-religion, which it, of course it is, to Christianity. So, but it's being given this lovely, shiny look that it's, it's like, um, it's very alluring, it's very exciting that Satanism is all about freedom. It's all about indulging, indulging your desires and being free to do whatever you want. And, um, and the Satanic Temple are very much involved in this, this PR campaign to sell Satanism to young people, but especially to young girls. You just have to look at the chilling adventures of Sabrina on Netflix to see that Satanism is being remarketed and rebranded as something very desirable for young people, especially young girls. So it's not a coincidence that we have Billie Eilish making Satanic pop music and appealing to an obviously primarily female audience. And it's no coincidence at the same time we have the chilling adventures of Sabrina on Netflix doing exactly the same thing, selling Satanism to young girls and, and in a very horrific and dark and brutal way. But it's not just those two. There are so many pop artists who are singing specifically to a female audience who are singing a message of darkness, fear, spiritual darkness and selling the idea of darkness as alluring. Halsey is also, has also been doing the same thing for some time, seeing messages about the, the aggressiveness of the female, the power that females have. And also her latest song, well, it wasn't her latest song, it was called Graveyard. It was a couple of songs that she released um, a couple of songs ago. Graveyard, it, again, it's this message of leading young girls into the darkness, into this realm where there is no light. There is no joy, there is no freedom, there is no happiness. Just this realm of darkness and misery and essentially Satanism. So Halsey's been doing this and artists like, um, what's her name, Aurora has been doing some very, putting some very subtle messages into, into her music. And, um, and there's another artist called Aura, A-U slash R-A, Aura. But there's so many more. Uh, Kesha has also been putting satanic messages out to young girls. And then you've got the TV programs. You've got all the TV programs like Stranger Things, um, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, and, um, and many, many others, which I couldn't possibly list here. But the agenda is to sell Satanism to young girls. And the reason why is because young girls are more vulnerable to, um, to Satanic messages. They're more open, they're more trusting of the media, and they, they haven't got this... Um, the suspiciousness and the cynicism that men inherently have, which is why women are being targeted and young girls are being targeted with this information, because they're more open and they're more trusting. So Satan knows that if he, if he, um, if he approaches the, the young females with a message of darkness and evil and, and Satanism 
and the allure of the darkness, then he will have more success. And also there is an army being built, some kind of antichrist army, because the antichrist is active now in our society. And, um, and the army that will follow him is currently being built. And Billy Eilish is the kind of ringleader of this army. Um, and many people don't even realize this is happening, but she is the ringleader. She's putting out the predominant messages and is being supported by all these other music artists, all these other TV programs and books as well. Selling darkness to young girls, selling the allure of darkness, the occult, because they're being pulled over to the dark side. Because when a human being is pulled over to the dark side and they are in their heart is kind of turned towards a desire for darkness and all the things that darkness offers, then they're capable of doing things that a normal human being wouldn't do. They're capable of violence. They're capable of cruelty. And this is why a young army is being formed. A young army is being created with all this information in the media, with Billie Eilish and the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina and, and all the other pop artists and TV programs. Um, an army who's a young army, a female army, whose heart is being turned away from the light, who are capable of doing unkind, cruel and dark things. And this is the Antichrist army. The Antichrist is currently um, very active publicly. He hasn't obviously said he's the Antichrist because he's not going to do that. He's going to promote himself as a man of the people, a man who cares, a man who wants to change society for the better. And this guy is one of the world's most popular actors and is currently um, well, the world, one of the world's most popular men. And he has uh, over 180 million followers on Instagram. His name is Dwayne The Rock Johnson. He is the Antichrist. I've been following him for many years, studying his messages, listening to what he's saying, looking at what he's putting out. And he is the Antichrist without a shadow of a doubt. And I've made some videos. You just have to look at my website that I made all about him called therockantichrist.com. That's therockantichrist.com. The link is in the description. And you will see that he has, um, he's definitely the man. He is definitely the Antichrist because he fits the bill and he is putting out these messages. He's actually promoting aggression, promoting hosto his hostility, promoting this fighting mentality, which is going to feed into the mentality of darkness, which is being created in the young people right now via the media. And the women are going to be the army. There's a young female army being created. And it might sound insane that an army would be female, but it's the case. This is why women are being taught to be more aggressive, more dominant, to be angry, be angry with men, see men as the enemy. They're being built up into the hostility is being built up in the female species to be angry, to be more powerful, that they need power, that it's their, their turn to be powerful, their turn to be oppressive. It's their turn to teach the men a lesson. This is a message which is um, permeated our culture in the media right now. And it's a feminist message. And it's a message which ties in with the Scum Manifesto. Now, if you haven't heard of the Scum Manifesto, that's S-C-U-M, which stands for the Society for Cutting Up Men. This is a manifesto written by Valerie Solanas in 1968. In the same year, she shot Andy Warhol. And of course, shooting Andy Warhol was a very good way to get publicity for her newly published manifesto, which suddenly became uh, much more popular. And the manifesto essentially says that men are evil, men are useless, men are worthless, men are pathetic, men are destroying the world, men are oppressing women, and they deserve to be killed. They deserve to be cut up, they deserve to be subjugated, tortured, oppressed. And um, it was an extreme manifesto, which is kind of laughable if you look at it. But this manifesto has been given a renaissance. And this this exact message of men deserving to die is being put out in Billie Eilish's videos. If you look at the video for a bad guy and look at the message about men, how is Billie treating the men in that video? How are men being portrayed? And notice that she's standing on a man's chest. She looks at the camera and does this. And then notice that there's two plastic bags hanging up behind her with decapitated men's heads in the plastic bag. And then watch the video, You Should See Me in a Crown, the animated version 
of you should see me in a crown and watch what happens to all the little men walking around the city. So we all know the little male figure that you see on restroom doors, you know, just a little symbol of a man. And it's Billie Eilish's symbol. She calls it the bloche. And it's, um, it's like a male symbol, but it's on its side as if it's being killed or hung or shot or had its throat slit. And this ties in with a message in Bad Guy. When she does this, she points to the guy who she's standing on and does this. Because the bloche, her bloche symbol, is an image of a man who's had his throat slit. And if you watch the video for You Should See Me in a Crown, the animated version, which I'll link below this video, you will see that that video contains a message for male genocide. So in that video, Billie Eilish turns into some kind of monster. She turns into a monster, like a spider-like monster who is just possessed with darkness and evil. And she then proceeds to decimate and destroy and just create a horrific scene in this little city, this little animated city where little men are walking around. It's all men. It's all this little great green male figure that she has on her clothes, the bloche symbol. They're all just walking around happily, you know, and then down comes this big monstrous spider, which is what Billie Eilish has turned into. And she basically scoops them all up in her mouth and devours them, chews them to pieces, spits them out and then vomits this vile, putrid vomit through the city. And all the men die, and all the beautiful flowers die, and it's a scene of darkness, misery, and horror. And it's, the message is male genocide. Now this sounds extreme, but it actually fits in with the Antichrist agenda. So the Antichrist agenda, for the Antichrist to succeed, he has to basically get men out of the way, especially Christian men, because Christian men are looking out for the Antichrist. Christian men cannot be fooled or deceived. But if the Antichrist can build a female army, a devoted and aggressive, you know, women can be uh, ferociously um, devoted and ferociously defensive um, of someone who they are protective of. It's, it's part of their motherly nature. So if the Antichrist can harness that sentiment in the female population, and that female population is being created right now, that female army is being created in the media, if the Antichrist can harness this, um, this strong, powerful, aggressive emotion, um, then he will use it to essentially subjugate and silence the men who speak out against him, who are who stand up and oppose him. Now, this is my job. I've been given the job, along with many other people, of pointing out the Antichrist agenda. And I'm, I've been given the job of pointing out that it is Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Now, of course, many people have their own ideas about the Antichrist, and they don't believe it's Dwayne The Rock Johnson. They have other ideas. But trust me, look at the website I made, therockantichrist.com, and just consider... Consider the logic of it. The Antichrist has to be extremely popular. He has to be extremely popular with young people because they are his people. Just like Hitler said, he alone who owns the youth gains the future. The Antichrist is in the process of owning the youth. This is why the youth are being targeted with all this propaganda, all this satanic information, all these ideas about revolt and rebellion against authority. The, um, the youth are being prepared to follow the Antichrist. And so the Antichrist has to be popular with young people. And everyone loves The Rock. He is Mr. Popular, Mr. Nice. And he is the man that people want to lead America into this new, new era of equality and um, tolerance and peace and um, justice. And he is putting himself forward as the man, as the next president. He is suggesting himself indirectly in his videos. He's indirectly suggesting himself as the man who will lead the nation. And you can just look at his Instagram videos. Look at them very carefully because they're all acted. They're all, uh, they're all political statements. If you look at them very, very carefully, you'll see that he's make, making political statements in all of his Instagram videos. And you can find him at Instagram.com slash The Rock so this is the Antichrist agenda and the young people are the army and that's why they're being targeted with all the satanic information to prepare them to do things that normal human beings would not do. Cruel things, just like Hitler prepared the young people in Germany to treat the Jews like 
subhuman um, creatures. This is what the young people are being prepared to do. They're being prepared to treat men, and especially Christian men, as subhuman, as oppressors, as worthy of pain, suffering, cruelty, torture, and so on. And this is happening right now. If your children watch TV, if your children watch Netflix, if your children watch any TV, um, they are getting these messages, I guarantee you. So if you want to know what these messages are, go to um, my playlist. I've got a playlist. If you go to my playlists, click on playlists and choose evidence videos. And click on evidence videos and you'll see a list of the messages that young people are getting. And many, many mainstream TV programs that many children are watching, many cartoons, many things on Netflix that are promoting this idea of the children taking over violently, just like the game Fortnite is, is promoting. Fortnite is part of the propaganda, and this is youth rebellion, this youth revolution, a violent youth revolution, and they will be led by the Antichrist, who will tell them who the bad guys are, who they need to be, be angry with, who they need to hate, and who they need to go after. And um, this, is world, this is the World War Three agenda, led by the Antichrist, and it's a war against the peace-loving people, the genuinely peace-loving people, the Christians, the, the men, specifically the men, because if you can wipe out the men from society, then the women will follow their leader. The women will follow the male leader. If there's no male leaders, if there's no strong male leaders standing up and saying, look, this is the way to live in peace. This is the way to, uh, to, um, to live your life with dignity and with decency. If there's no strong male voices um, standing up and speaking, then the women will look for the only remaining male voice, which will be the Antichrist. The Antichrist will be the voice of the masses. And he will tell them what is right, what is wrong, what they should and shouldn't believe in, what is uh, what they need to do and who they need to be angry with and so on. There's a lot of information in this video, I know. And uh, if you want to get it in more detail, look at my videos, Look, go to evidence videos, scroll down those videos and click on some of those videos. They're very, very important because they contain all the evidence for what I've just told you. So thank you for listening to me. Um, be aware of what your children are watching. There's some deeply disturbing messages. Some of them are very subtle. They have political messages. They're messages about um, spiritual darkness, evil, and um, and you really need to be aware of what messages your children are absorbing via the media, most media channels, in fact. The safest thing you can do is stop your children watching um, things in the media because some of the messages are very, very subtle indeed and it's hard to discriminate between what is good and what is bad. But you can see some of the main ones in my evidence videos. Okay, so thank you for watching this. I appreciate you listening to me and uh, I wish you well. And God bless you. Goodbye.